Hello seniors, it's been a while and I hope you are all in good health for today's another discussion. So let us go on the journey of learning on the field of Philippine politics and governance. Brace yourselves and have a happy learning ahead. Evolution of Philippine Politics and Governance This lesson presents the development of Philippine government of prehistory to the modern era. Furthermore, it will educate students how Filipino participate under Spanish rule to American administration to present republic. Before we proceed with our discussion, let us first look upon our topic's content standard. Demonstrate an understanding of the historical background of Philippine democratic politics, the executive, the legislative, the judiciary, and decentralization and local governance. For the performance standard, explain the rules of different political institutions. Lastly, for the most essential learning competency, analyze the evolution of Philippine politics and governance. Let us begin our discussion about the evolution of Philippine politics and governance by this statement by John Henry Clark. History is not everything, but it is a starting point. History is a clock that people use to tell their political and cultural time of day. It is a compass they use to find themselves on the map of human geography. It tells them where they are, but more importantly, what they must be. The Development of Philippine Government the development of Philippine government began before the coming of the Spaniards or the pre-colonial period before 1565. It was followed by the colonization of the Philippines by the Spaniards for 333 years beginning in 1565 until 1898. The revolutionary period happened in 1868 until 1898 while the American period started in 1898 and ended on 1941. The Japanese occupied the Philippines for almost four years from 1941 to 1945. The defeat of Japan paved way the beginning of the Third Republic from 1946 until 1971. The martial law era under President Marcos started in 1972 until 1981 and the Fourth Republic under still his regime began in 1981 until 1986 when the People Power won happened. And from 1986 up to the present is the beginning of the Fifth Republic. Pre-colonial period before 1565. The island's pre-colonial period, during which indigenous peoples engaged in healthy trade with various cultures and economies in the region, gave way to a long colonial period, first under Spain for over 300 years and then under the United States, during which it came briefly under Japanese occupation in World War II. Prior to the arrival of the Spaniards, the Philippines was composed of settlements or villages, each called barangay, named after balangay, a Malayan word meaning boat. The head or the leader was called a datu or raha who was assisted by the elders in the community. All the powers of the government were exercised by the datu or raha. He was the chief executive lawgiver, chief judge, and military head. As stated by Benaflor in 2016, the Philippines was occupied by people from nearby islands and formed themselves into barangay. He mentions that the barangay was the local government unit headed by Araha or Datu. 
Maginoos, who act as the Council of Elders, assisted the Dato in implementing rules, past judgment, and penalties to maintain peace and order. Present also during the pre-colonial times was the system of stratification, which was deemed politically significant. The stratification was based on class, which included the nobility or maharlika, the free men or the timawas, and the slaves or what we call as the aliping namamahay or aliping sa gigilid. The datu belonged to the maharlika class. Women also played a pivotal role during this period as they held important positions in pre-colonial Philippine society. The pre-colonial system was already complex and sophisticated such that foreign relations were already established as early as this period. Spanish period from 1565 to 1898 Ferdinand Magellan's arrival in the Philippines in 1521 became the Spanish crown's basis for the occupation of the archipelago. Thereafter, a number of expeditions were sent to formally colonize the archipelago. However, it was only during Miguel Lopez de Legazpi's conquest of the islands in 1565 did the formal establishment of a colonial government that took place here in the Philippines. The Philippines was governed indirectly by the King of Spain through the Viceroy of Mexico, when Mexico, also a former colony of Spain, gained its freedom in 1821, the Philippines was ruled directly by Spain until 1898. The government established in the Philippines was centralized. The national government was headed by Spanish Governor General who was appointed by the King of Spain. The Governor General was at times called the representative of the King of Spain or the Little King in the Philippines. If the pre-colonial government was characterized by independent barangays, the Spaniards consolidated power under a centralized government, which was led by the Governor General. With his authority based in Manila or in Intramuros, the Governor General was likewise an all-powerful individual. He had executive, legislative, judicial, administrative, as well as military powers. The centralization of powers and the creation of a basic unitary government is thus a Spanish influence. The barangays were consolidated for the purpose of administrative efficiency. When the Spaniards were about to implement their imperial design, they noticed that the sparse indigenous population were scattered in forest lands and coastal areas. With this, the friars enticed the natives to live in towns. Recognizing the influence of the Datus for the easier pacification of natives, the Spaniards appointed the chieftains as the Cabeza de Barangay. The Datus' traditional powers, however, were lost and were limited to collecting taxes. The unified barangays composed the pueblos or towns, which were led by the gobernadorcillo or the so-called little governor. The consolidated towns then formed into provinces, which could be categorized into two. Provinces that were fully subjugated were called alcaldia, headed by the alcalde mayor, while provinces that were not entirely pacified under Spanish authority were called corregimiento, led by the corregidor. If during the pre-colonial period, the Dato and the Council of Elders created laws, laws during the Spanish period emanated from Spain. On the other hand, there was a royal audiencia, which was an independent body created to hear and solve cases. Initially, the governor general headed the judicial body, but the chief justice replaced him permanently. Ogensias were established in Manila, Cebu, and Vigan. While the Ogensia was not an exact model of the present-day Supreme Court, it nonetheless had influence on its structure.
Revolutionary period from 1868 to 1898 The revolutionary period or the Philippine Revolution is one of the most important events in the country's history, awakening a proud sense of nationalism for generations of Filipinos to come. In a period of heavy struggle and conflict, Filipinos of different backgrounds united with a common goal, to resist colonialism. The Katipunan Movement During the second half of the 19th century, the nationalist sentiments of the Filipinos were awakened. The propaganda movement led by key figures such as Jose Rizal, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, and Graciano Lopez Zahaina advocated reforms, such that the same rights and freedoms being enjoyed in Spain would also be granted to the Filipinos. They wrote new novels, manifestos, and articles that called for reforms. However, the failure of the propaganda to initiate changes in the society gave birth to a secret association, the Kataas-Taasang Kagalang-Galangang Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan or simply as KKK. The KKK was founded in 1892 by Andres Bonifacio and a group of patriots the Katipunan sought independence from Spain and set the 1896 revolution in motion. As an organization, the Katipunan adopted its own form of government which had national and local levels. The Katipunan was governed by the Kataas Taasang Sangunian or Supreme Council which was composed of the President, Secretary or Secretaries, Treasurer and Fiscal. The Sangguni Ang Balangay or Provincial Council and the Sangguni Ang Bayan or Popular Council was also organized in each province and town respectively. A Sangguni Ang Hukuman or Judicial Council was also created to adjudicate on cases involving members of the organization. Events, however, led to the division of the Katipunan into two factions, the Magdalo and Magdiwang. The Spaniards were about to make an offensive in Cavite and a unified leadership was deemed necessary. So that is why on March 22, 1897, the Tejeros Convention was called where General Emilio Aguinaldo was elected as president. The Biakna Bato Republic On November 1, 1897, Aguinaldo established the Biakna Bato Republic. Its constitution declared the creation of an independent Philippine state. The Republic, however, lasted for only a month after the Pact of Biakna Bato was signed. It provided for the amnesty and monetary indemnity of Aguinaldo and other revolutionaries, including the exile of the revolutionary government to Hong Kong. The Pact was supposed to signal the end of the revolution but Aguinaldo and his men purchased more arms and ammunition to prepare themselves for another siege. Emilio Aguinaldo's Dictatorial Government By April 1898, the Spanish-American War broke out. Aguinaldo sailed for Cavite from Hong Kong and by May 24 of the same year, he established a dictatorial government. It was under this dictatorial government that the Philippine independence from Spain was declared on June 12, 1898 in Cavite, Cavite. First Philippine Republic On 15th of September 1898, months after the Declaration of Independence, the Malolos Congress convened, which produced the Malolos Constitution. On January 23, 1899, the first Philippine Republic was established with Emilio Aguinaldo as its president. A Supreme Court of Justice was likewise created, which addressed cases. It was during the Philippine Revolutionary Period wherein the first Philippine Republic started. However, the outbreak of the Philippine-American War suspended the activities of these institutions. In 1901, Emilio Aguinaldo was captured by American forces, leading to the dissolution of the First Philippine Republic.
American period from 1898 to 1941. The signing of the Treaty of Paris signaled the end of the Spanish-American War. The treaty involved United States payment of 20 million US dollar to Spain after the latter ceded all its imperial possessions, including Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines. The American occupation of the Philippines definitely precipitated the Philippine-American War. Following the capture of Emilio Aguinaldo and the defeat of the revolutionary forces, the official end of hostilities was declared in 1902. Regardless of this, individual uprisings all over the archipelago still persisted, making the Philippine-American War one of the longest wars the United States has ever been to. American Military Government In 1898, after America's capture of Manila, the United States forces established a military government in the Philippines. It was led by a military governor who exercised all powers of the government. The military governor administered the Philippines through the authority of the U.S. President, who was also the commander-in-chief of the U.S. Armed Forces. Under this setting, the President of the United States had the power to establish a military government in the Philippines as commander-in-chief of all armed forces of the United States. His authority was delegated to the military governor who exercised all powers of the government as long as the war lasted, being executive, legislative, and judiciary. First was Wesley Merritt, the second was General Elwell Otis, and the third and last was Major General Arthur MacArthur. Civil Government Pursuant to the so-called Spooner Amendment on the Army Appropriation Act passed in the U.S. Congress on March 3, 1901, which ended the military regime in the Philippines, the civil government was inaugurated in Manila on July 4, 1901. The position of the civil governor was created on October 29, 1901 and exercised legislative powers. He remained as President of the Philippine Commission, the sole law-making body of the government from 1901 to 1907. From 1907 to 1916, the Philippine Com Commission acted as the upper house of the legislative branch with the Philippine Assembly, serving as the lower house. After the passage of the Spooner Law in 1916, these two bodies gave way to the Philippine Legislature. The Philippines was represented in the United States by two resident commissioners who were elected the Philippine Legislature. The Jones Law of 1916, which became the fundamental law for the Philippines, vested the legislative power in an all-Filipino lawmaking body composed of the Philippine Senate and the House of Representatives. Commonwealth Government the tidings McDuffie Law in 1934 established the Commonwealth Government. It was a form of government in transition towards independence. It provided for a 10-year transition period after which the Philippine independence would be proclaimed and established. The Commonwealth Government of the Philippines was inaugurated on November 15, 1935 following the first national election held on September 12, 1935 under the 1935 Constitution. Manuel L. Quezon and Sergio Osmeña won as President and Vice President respectively. The Commonwealth Government functioned in exile during World War II in Washington, USA from May 13, 1942 to October 3, 1944 after which it was re-established in Manila on February 27, 1945. The USA turned over the, to a Filipino president the full powers and responsibilities of the Commonwealth government under the 1935 Constitution. 
The government under the Japanese occupation from 1941 to 1945. The Japanese occupation of the Philippines occurred between 1941 and 1945, when Imperial Japan occupied the Commonwealth of the Philippines during World War II. The Japanese occupation of Manila signaled the establishment of the Japanese military administration on January 3, 1942. It consequently led to the interruption of American rule in the Philippines. As an initial move, the Japanese military forces established the Philippine Executive Commission or PEC, a civil government that would temporarily rule the country. It was composed of Filipinos with George B. Vargas as its chairman. While this commission exercised executive and legislative powers, everything was subject to approval by the commander-in-chief of the Japanese forces. In 1943, a new constitution was promulgated, and the Japanese-sponsored Philippine Republic was established. Jose P. Laurel served as its president. Also called the Second Republic, its executive, Legislative and judiciary structures were like those of the PEC. While Filipinos assumed government positions, the Japanese apparently influenced how the country would be administered. Thus, the Second Republic is commonly referred to as a puppet government. Soon after the return of General Douglas MacArthur to the Philippines in 1944, and the eventual de defeat of the Japanese forces, the Commonwealth government was re-established. The 1935 constitution again became the highest law of the land. Meanwhile, Manila suffered as the second most devastated city after the Second World War next to the city of Warsaw in Poland. By July 5, 1945, MacArthur announced the liberation of the Philippines. The re-establishment of the government under Osmania saw enormous problems, devastation by war, destruction of the economy, political warfare, and guerrilla violence. Thus, the primary problem during this period was the reconstruction of the country and the government. The Third Republic of the Philippines the Third Republic of the Philippines was inaugurated on July 4, 1946. It marked the culmination of the fiscal campaign for the Philippine independence, the two landmarks of which were the enactment of the Jones Law in 1916 in which the U.S. Congress pledged independence for the Philippines once Filipinos had proven their capability for self-government, and the Philippine Independence Act of 1934 popularly known as Tidings McDuffie Law, which put in place a 10-year transition period during which the Philippines had Commonwealth status. The Third Republic also marked the recognition by the global community of nations of the nationhood of the Philippines, a process that began when the Commonwealth of the Philippines joined the Anti-Axis Alliance, known as the United Nations, on June 14, 1942, receiving recognition as an allied nation even before independence. Thus, the inauguration of the Third Republic marked the fulfillment of the long struggle for independence that began with the Philippine Revolution on August 23, 1896, and which was formalized on June 12, 1898 with the proclamation of Philippine independence at Kawit Cavite by General Emilio Aguinaldo. Rojas Administration, May 28, 1946 to April 15, 1948. He was elected as the third president of the Philippine Commonwealth, first president of the Independent Republic of the Philippines, and the fifth president of the Philippines. During his term, he faced the aftermath of the war and severe damages in all aspects of human condition. He reorganized the government by establishing the Rehabilitation Finance Corporation, reorganized as the Development Bank of the Philippines in 1958. 
During his term, a Military Assistance Pact was signed in 1947, granting the United States a 99-year lease on designated military bases in the country. Quirino Administration April 17, 1948 to December 30, 1953 Vice President Elpidio Quirino ascended to the presidency when Rojas died in 1948. He ran for president in his own right in 1949, winning a four-year term. He served as the second president of the Third Republic. Noted as two objectives of his administration were economic reconstruction and restoration of people's trust. He also created rural banks. Low confidence in the government and problems on peace and order due to socio-economic problems, especially in rural areas, particularly labor disputes, occurred during his term. Magsaysay Administration December 30, 1953 to March 17, 1957 To help the rural masses was the focal point of the populist administration of President Ramon Magsaysay. In his first executive order, he established the Presidential Complaint and Action Commission, which investigated various citizen complaints and recommended remedial actions through different government agencies. The commission served to boost the nation's confidence with its government. It was seen as a fulfillment of President Magsaysay's promise to become a president for the people. The principles of the Magsaysay administration were codified in the Magsaysay Credo and became the theme of leadership and public service. He was immensely popular with the ordinary people and he is popularly known as the man of the masses. Garcia Administration March 18, 1957 to December 30, 1961 Carlos P. Garcia's administration promoted the Philippine First Policy, whose focal point was to regain economic independence a national effort by Filipinos to obtain major and dominant participation in their economy. The administration campaigned for the citizens' support in patronizing Filipino products and services and implemented import and currency controls favorable for Filipino industries. In connection with the government's goal of self-sufficiency was the austerity program which President Garcia described in his first State of the Nation address as more work, more thrift, more productive investment, and more efficiencies that aim to mobilize national savings. The Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act through Republic Act No. 301 aimed to prevent corruption and promote honesty and public trust were signed during his term. Macapagal Administration December 13, 1961 to December 30, 1965 President Gisdado Macapagal, during his inaugural address on December 30, 1961, emphasized the responsibilities and goals to be attained in the new era. That was the Macapagal Administration. He reiterated his resolve to eradicate corruption and assured the public that honesty would prevail in his presidency. President Macapagal aimed at self-sufficiency and the promotion of every citizen's welfare through the partnership of the government and private sector and to alleviate poverty by providing solutions for unemployment. In the field of foreign relations, the Philippines became a founding member of Mafilindo alongside of Malaysia and Indonesia through the Manila Accord of 1963. The regional organization of Malay states strove for Asian solutions by Asian nations for Asian problems and aimed to solve national and regional problems through regional diplomacy. Marcos Administration and the Fourth Republic, 
December 13, 1965 to February 25, 1986. 1965, Ferdinand Marcos was elected to the presidency and his administration was characterized by an increased agricultural productivity, massive infrastructure development, and a defining diplomatic policy. In 1969, he ran for the election and succeeded, making him the only president under the 1935 constitution to be elected for a second term. That time, however, the country was undergoing worsening economic condition, deteriorating peace and order, social discontent, and a growing communist insurgency. To save the republic from this turmoil and to reform the society, Marcos, on September 23, 1972, announced on nationwide radio and television that he was placing the entire country under martial law. The declaration was made through the Virtue Proclamation 1081, which was signed on 21th of September of the same year. Marcos rationalized that martial law was the only option that would solve the rebellion, which posed a threat to the peace and order of the country. He then instituted the Bagong Lipunan, which envisioned a thriving and self-reliant society that is based on new social and political values. During martial law, the political rights and civil liberties of the people as well as their human rights were suppressed and violated. The suspension of the writ of habeas corpus led to the arrest and detention of any person without proper court proceeding. There were also cases of human rights abuses among those who were vocal against the regime. Press freedom was suppressed as Marcos established control of mass media. While Marcos already lifted martial law by 1981, he continued to exercise dictatorial powers. Calls to end his dictatorial regime brought Filipinos to take to the streets the party in a popular and non-violent uprising called the EDSA People Power, which ousted Marcos and ended his dictatorial rule. Fifth Republic from 1986 to present time The period from 1986 onward is the restoration of democracy. The fall of the dictatorship marked the shift toward redemocratization and return to constitutionalism. A revolutionary government was created following Corazon Aquino's ascent to presidency. A freedom constitution was also framed, which served as the foundation of the transitory government. When a new Philippine constitution was ratified in 1987, a democratic and republican government was established. The 1987 Constitution featured aspects that reflected those of the 1935 Constitution, albeit several changes. The post-EDSA era, also known as the Fifth Republic, saw the revival of democracy, wherein governmental powers emanate from the people. Elections, political parties, and civil societies were thus reinstituted. Civilian authority through the president was recognized supreme over military. An independent judiciary was also established. The Philippine legislature also returned to a bicameral form with the rebirth of the Senate and the House of Representatives. Corazon C. Aquino Administration from 1986 to 1992 President Corazon Coanco Aquino is the 11th president of the Philippines and the first woman to become president of the country. The political landscape of the country at that time did not look any better. To resolve this, Aquino commissioned a referendum that would be the framework for the new government. Released in February 1987, the new charter easily won the approval of the public. Cory Aquino can be praised for a notable political reform made during her tenure that aimed to decentralize political power in the government. 
or simply known as the 1991 Local Government Code. She survived seven coup d'etat attempts during her term. She was responsible for the restoration of democratic processes and institutions in the Philippines. The members of the Philippine Senate in 1991 during her term rejected the treaty that would have allowed a 10-year extension of the U.S. military bases in the Philippines, thus making the end of the 99-year military assistance pact established during the time of Rojas. Ramos administration from 1992 to 1998. Fidel V. Ramos took office in 1992 and immediately worked on the country's recovery and initiated the social reform agenda that was oriented towards alleviating poverty. He also led the implementation of Build Operate Transfer Law, which resulted in the improved public infrastructure and deregulated several industries that liberalized the economy. Under his term, the country also had improvements in its relations to Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MNLF. He was the first Asian recipient of UNESCO Peace Award this effort. He also came to be known as the Centennial President for his successful supervision of the 100th anniversary of the country's independence from the Spanish rule celebrated in June 12, 1998. He was known for his program Philippines 2000 where he attempted to make the Philippines a tiger economy of Asia. During his administration, capital punishment was reimposed. Strada administration beginning on 1998 until 2001. Joseph Ejercito Estrada became the 13th president in 1998 after Ramos finished his term. Estrada was the previous mayor in the municipality of San Juan, Metro Manila, and vice president of Ramos. He gained support in the election for his promise to begin a pro-poor administration that his predecessors failed to promote in their respective platforms and won with a wide margin. This support spiraled down as his administration was accused with corruption. Critics branded him of failing to live up to the promises due to the resurfacing of cronism in the government. His election campaign, Era Para Sa Mahirap, won him the votes of the masses. He was removed from office on January 20, 2001 through EDSA Revolution II because of the controversial impeachment trial against him. He was tried and convicted for plunder and spent six years prison but given presidential pardon by his successor, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, his former vice president. Arroyo Administration 2001-2010 Gloria Macapagal Arroyo became the president after Estrada was ousted through People Power II uprising. In the 2004 Philippine national elections, Arroyo ran and won the presidential race. She was seated into office for the second time. Arroyo pushed for a stronger republic geared towards vigorous economic reforms under her administration. However, her administration was bombarded with several controversies and impeachment attempts in the last five years. This contentment led to frequent protesters expressing their disappointment and had their rallies at the streets. She had this vision which she called Sugpuin Ang Kahirapan. Her nine-year administration was marred with issues like cheating in the presidential election, poverty, expanded value-added tax law, fertilizer scam, wetting, and ZTE scandal. Benigno Aquino III Administration from 2010 to 2016 Benigno Simeon Coanco Aquino III, also known as Noinoy or Pinoy, was proclaimed as the 15th President of the Republic on June 30, 2010. Aquino's six-year term is remembered for both positive and negative events. He has been criticized for his government's slow response to help the victims of Super Typhoon Yolanda, the Mama Sapano massacre, and other crises. 
In spite of these negative impressions, Aquino left the presidency with a stable democracy and a higher credit rating. Fighting corruption was a major objective in his administration to realize his election campaign slogan, The Ang Matuwid or Straight Path. Duterte Administration 2016 to 2022. Rodrigo Duigong Roa Duterte, also known as Rudy, takes oath as the 16th President of the Philippines at Malacanang Palace in Manila at 12 noon on June 30, 2016. Duterte is a lawyer and politician. He is the former mayor and former first district congressman of Davao City in Mindanao an island in the southern Philippines where Muslim insurgents are based. He is the first president to come from Mindanao. Duterte is clamoring for a change in the constitution from a presidential to a federal form of government. Duterte won the presidential race as an outspoken, strong-willed crime fighter. He is, however, criticized for his alleged support of vigilante groups involved in extrajudicial killings to fight crimes. He is also known because of his strong comments about U.S. as well as the Church. He is the proponent of the Build, Build, Build project. For the performance tasks and other activities, your teacher will provide you the appropriate tasks to be done by depending on the activities agreed upon or needed by your learners. You may contact your teachers for your performance tasks and activities. If you have any questions regarding this topic, you may comment down below your questions or you may send it to your teacher for clarification. Guess it's time to say goodbye for now, my dear learners. See you next time.